Yo, what's up, guys? So today we're going to be going over the uh, Eldrazi Unbound Commander deck. Um, it is the last of the Commander Masters pre-cons that was revealed. I'm uh, looking forward to going over it. Uh, I do think that this is probably the best deck out of the box. Um, whereas, you know, I think that the, uh, I don't call it, the Enchantment deck is probably the best deck overall. Um, to, like invest in because of how <clears throat> versatile it can be the eldrazi deck definitely is probably the best deck out of the four like out of box like power wise uh reprint wise all of that but uh before we get into it, i'd like to ask you guys go down there and hit that rep subscribe button we're trying to hit a thousand subs before the end of the year we're making good progress uh the videos uh have been a little weird since I started school back up and trying to find things to post about besides just gameplay videos, I don't really like doing them all the time and like and getting close to the end of this term. So I've got a lot of projects coming up, but uh, yeah, we're getting close. Uh, so any support helps, but uh, we're going to hop right into it. All right, guys, we're over here on Card Game Base's website, like the last three. Um, this is the Eldrazi Unbound deck. It is uh, Eldrazi. Creature type, expensive colorless spells, colorless, um, and the main commander is Zuladoc, uh, Void Gorger. We're going to go over what Zuladoc does. Very nice art for one of the best cards in the, in the deck. Um, Zuladoc is a uh, legendary creature Eldrazi, 7-4 for 5 and another colorless. Don't, want, don't know why they specify the additional color, colorless. I think it's just to show that the deck is just filled with waste. Um, says, color spells you cast from your hand with mana value 7 or greater have Cascade Cascade. A uh, very strong ability. For those who don't know, it does tell you what it, do what it does down here, but Cascade is um, you exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card uh, with lesser mana value. Um, and then you just do it again. So you'll Cascade, and then you'll Cascade again for less than the 7 or whatever. Say you just cast something for 7. You'll Cascade for something for less than 7, and then you'll do it again. Very, very strong in a colorless deck, uh, especially a deck filled with big creatures and big value cards. Um, we have the alt commander, uh, Omarthus, Ghostfire Initiate. This is probably the cooler part of the deck, in my opinion. <clears throat> Not really good as a commander itself, just because what it does in colorless isn't a lot. Um, but throwing in the 99 of the deck that it would work in is very good. Uh, Omarthus is a. Spirit, legendary creature Spirit Naga, 0-0 zero, zero for XX. Um, says Omarthus, Ghostfire Initiate, enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Uh, whenever you put a, one or more plus 1 plus 1 counters on another colorless creature you control, or another colorless creature, you may put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Omarthus. So it only works with colorless creatures, unfortunately. That's why it's good in this deck. Um, but if you're running a morph deck... Not morph. Uh, is it morph? Manifest. Manifest, morph, whatever. Uh, the ones where you put the cards on the field face down, they're two twos. Those are colorless. So if you're running any sort of plus one, plus one counter shenanigans in a deck and you can do manifest stuff, this guy's amazing. Because uh, it also says when he dies, manifest the number of cards off the top of your library equal to the number of counters on it. So you could easily manifest like 10 cards. Easily. Um which is just 10 two twos that you can cast that just sit on the field. It's like having 10 extra cards in your hand, but they're also bodies. Um, next, we have Flayer of Loyalties. Um, it is a creature Eldrazi, 10-10 um, for 10 mana. Uh, when you cast a spell, gain control of target creature until the end of turn. Untap that creature until the end of turn. It has base power and toughness 10-10 and gains Trample, Annihilator 2, and Haste. This has Annihilator 2 and Trample. So basically, you cast this guy. You get to take something from somebody. You can also choose your own stuff. Um, but uh, you basically can just turn something into a 10-10 with Annihilator and Trample, which is amazing. Uh, 10 mana is big, but you're cascading twice if you have Zoldok on the field, which is fantastic. We have uh, Abstruse Archaic. Uh, three, four for four, uh, creature avatar with vigilance says tap one and tap, copy target activator, triggered ability you control from a cola source. You may choose new targets for the copy. Um, just uh, like a copying dude, very nice, good for the deck. Um, another A plus card, uh, skittering cicada. Uh, it is a creature insect two, two for three colas, has flash, gives your color spells 
uh, flash as well. Um, or you may cast your color spells as though they had flash. And then whenever you cast a color spell until the end of the turn, Skittering Cicada gains trample and gets plus X plus text, where X is number or X is that spell's mana value. So you flash in Flare of Loyalties, you choose another creature, or you can choose Skittering Cicada. Um, I would choose Skittering Cicada because this goes on a stack, turns this into a 10-10 with um trample and Nihilator 2 and haste then it gets an additional plus 10 plus 10 from this thing's mana value so now it's a 2020 with annihilator 2 and trample that's a big that's huge um we have desecrate reality a new instant uh for each opponent exile up to one target permanent that player controls with an even mana value zero is even and that has adamant if at least three colorless mana was sped to cast this spell Return a permanent card with an odd mana value from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's Skittering Cicada. That's, um... That's... I don't know, fucking... There's not a lot here. Uh, it's probably, like, stuff that's in the deck. But being able to bring back something with an odd mana value is great, as well as exiling a, a permanent off of each person's board. Amazing. It's exile to one target permanent. You can exile a land if you want. Uh, then we have, we're going to do this one last. You guys can read it, but I'm going to do that one last. We have, uh, Calamity of Titans, uh, Sorcery for four and two colorless. Um, as an additional cost of the spell, or to cast the spell, reveal a colorless creature from your hand. Um, exile each creature and Planeswalker with mana value less than the revealed card's mana value. So, nice board wipe for colorless. We have Dark Steel Monolith, uh, artifact for eight colorless, indestructible. You may only once each turn, you may pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for a colorless spell you cast from your hand. So, you can just cast this, which we'll go over for free. Um, then we have Ugin's Mastery for colorless. Whenever you cast a colorless creature spell, manifest the top card of your library. Um, and then whenever you attack with creatures with total power six or greater, you may turn a face down creature you control face up. So you can manifest three cards or whatever. Um, next turn, attack, turn the, the Ulamog up. Who cares? Um, and then the final card, uh, that's new, uh, probably the best card in the deck, uh, is Rise of the Eldrazi, a sorcery for nine and three colorless. This spell can't be countered. Destroy target permanent. Target player draws four cards. Take an extra turn after this one. Exile Rise of Eldrazi. So it can't be countered. Uh, you get to destroy a permanent that you don't like. You get to draw four cards because you can target yourself. And then you take an extra turn. So you fill up your grip. You um, bop your opponent, like the biggest issue on the field that could stop you from winning the next your next turn. And then you take an extra turn. And this isn't a colorless deck. You could fill this deck up with mana rocks and mana crypts, mana vaults, all the, the colorless staples. And then, like, 12 mana is nothing in that case. Like, especially if you played a Darksteel Monolith a turn before, or was able to cheat this out, and then cast this for free. Like, that's that's fantastic. Like, you're just getting an extra turn for free, and you still got your mana to fuck around with on that turn. Great card. Uh, we'll go over the cards in the deck. Um, there's some good stuff in here. There's obviously Zoladoc. Ugin the Ineffable. I think it's a little unfortunate they only did the one Ugin and they didn't do the OG Ugin. OG Ugin, if you didn't know, um, his minus ability destroys um, permanents with... I think it's... Destroy per er, permanents with X mana value less... Or multiple... What is it? Um, let me look it up real quick. Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Says each player, or exile each permanent with converted mana cost X or less, that's one or more colors. So you choose, like, you pay, you, you, you minus five, get rid of everything with permanent value five or lower on the field. Um, it's great. It's a great removal card. Um, Ugin the Ethereal is obviously good. It makes your color spells cost two less, which is great. Um, we'll go through the creatures. We have Ancient Stone Idol, um, kind of a like like a mandatory in color stacks. Like it's just a ten ten that you can cast for very little. Um, and then when it dies, you create a six twelve colorless construct, um, which is good. Uh, Artisan of Kozilek, great. Love that they are reprinting Artisan and if that betrays a little bit of a spoiler. Um, I run this combo in my uh. 
Carador deck, because you get both of them in the grave, you cast Artisan from the grave with Carador's ability on your turn, and then you just get to bring back his Epitrace. Um, you just need them both in the grave, which is easy in a reanimator deck where you want to bin stuff. You have Bane of uh, Balaged, um, pretty good. Uh, Burnished Heart, great. Uh, Crashing Drawbridge is very good to give your creatures haste. Um, Duplicate is good. Uh, Endbringer is fine. Uh, Endless One is great. Geode Golem is fine. Um, actually, Geode Golem is actually really good. Um, maybe not in this deck because it's only one extra mana, but being able to give him haste with something like um, Crashing Drawbridge, they already have attack uh, somebody um, that's open so you can play your commander for free. Uh, Hanger Backwalker is great. If it betrays, it actually got new art. It's not showing the new art here, but it did get new art, and um, I'm planning on picking up a copy of that one that has new art. You have uh, a new Kozilek, which is fine. This is the only Eldrazi Titan they reprinted in here, but it's because... Which is weird, because I don't remember if it's new or old Kozilek that got a reprint in the set. But it got like side profiles with Ulamog, and I think it's a new Ulamog, not Ulamog. So uh, we have Matter Reshaper, which is great. Uh, Metalwork Colossus is fine. Uh, Meteor Golem is fine. Um, Myriad Construct is good. Oblivion Sower is great. Um, Ornithopter of Paradise is great. Uh, uh, Palladium Mirror is fine. Uh, Scare Tiller is fine. Uh, Sad Robot's good. Uh, Soul of New Phyrexia. They spelt this wrong, so it's not showing up, but that's a fine one. Steel Hellkite, amazing. Um, Stone Coil Ser Serpent, amazing. Suspicious Bookcase is great. And we'll go into the instance we have Not of This World, which is great. Um, like the like counter target speller ability, target permanent, or that targets a permanent you control for seven. Uh, cost seven less to cast. Um, if you have one of your big guys on the field, which is good. Uh, so it's basically a free counter spell. We have Spatial uh, Contortion, good. Uh, Titan's Presence is good. Warping Whale is good. All is Dust is probably, like, extremely great in this. Um, you basically just get, it's a free counter, or free um, board wipe that gets around Indestructible because it says Sack. So it gets around indestructible creatures. Um, it gets around hexproof creatures. Um, the only creature that I can think of off the top of my head that doesn't get around is Sigarda, because Sigarda says it can't be sacked, but still great. Like you get to keep all your shit. Everybody else's stuff goes bye bye. Uh, land wise, we have an arcane lighthouse. Great reprint. Um, I recommend this as a land in anybody's deck. Getting making it so some you can bop something that has hexproof, has boots on it or something like that is great. Um, e either of the boots, lightning greaves and uh, swift foot boots. Um, Arch of Orc, um, Araska, good. Uh, love the ascend ability. Blast zone is good. Bonders Enclave is good. Eldrazi Temple is amazing. Um. Forge of Heroes is good. I don't think it's very good in this deck. Um, Dire Reach uh, Sanitarium is fine. Uh, Guild Commons is fine. Majoring Network is good. Mirror Pool is great. Re Wreck Tower is good. Rogue's Passage is good. Ruins of Oren Reef is great. Um, yeah, this is a good, <laughs> good card. Uh, Scavenger Grounds is great. Uh, you love to be able to exile people's graves. Seagate Wreckage is good. Temple of the False God in this deck is good. Damn, they have a lot of spelling mistakes. Uh, Tomb of the Spirit Dragon is good. Uh, High Right Sanctum is okay. Um, War Room. Uh, this one's good, yeah. Just the redraw card, because you don't have to pay any life, because there's no colors in your commander. The Urza's Mind Power Plan Tower is a great add, it, or add to this deck. 16 Waste is good. It's been a while since we've gotten Waste printed. Shred of the Forsaken Gods is fine. Um, it's I I feel the same way about Shrine and um, what is it Temple of the False God that I feel about like tapped lands like they're they're fine but like they don't really do you much playing them 
early. Well, tap lands are better, but um, we have Dreamstone. We're in the artifacts. So we have Dreamstone. Hedron is great. Um, Endless Atlas is good. Overflowing Chalice is great. I'm glad that this card is like super cheap now. We have a uh, Fire Shrieker, great card. Forsaken Monument, absolutely amazing. Uh, Hedron Archive, great. Investigator Journal, good. Um, Cauldra Complete, I'm glad this card got a reprint. I do want to pick up a copy of this card. Lightning Greaves, love that art. Um, Maze Mind Tome is good. Uh, Mind Stone is good. Mirror, Mirage Mirror is great. Mystic Forge is good. Perilous Vault is great. Soul Ring, uh, Thought Vessel, amazing. Thran Dynamo, amazing. Uh, Transmogrifying Wand is good. Um, Unstable Obelisk is good. Warm Power Stone is good. Uh, just amazing, um, amazing reprints in this deck, as well as, like, the the value on this color deck. Like, the fact that they were able to print so much good stuff in this color deck is kind of amazing, but also kind of disappointing, because it feels like they pumped all of their value that they could use on this set into this deck and none of the other three. The, the, the next best reprint that I could even think off the top of my head is the Chain Veil in the Planeswalker deck. And even then, like, the Planeswalker options in the Planeswalker deck aren't great. Like, there's some good ones, don't get me wrong. Like, New Chandra, um, Counterspell, Sh or Can't Be Countered Chandra that creates, um, creates one ones, right? I think so. Um, that one's good. But, like, I can't think off the top of my head anything good in the sliver deck that got reprinted like aside from hive lord which was a 13 dollar card like and maybe like a couple of the 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 chump boys and the commander itself but like reprint wise like that deck was <sighs> treated like garbage um the enchantment deck is amazing um but i still feel like that one could have gotten better reprints as well as especially the mana base it just feels like they they favorited the color stack over the other three, and it shows that they didn't really care about the other three. But uh, we'll go over the um, tokens you can get on the deck. We've got Thopter, which turns into which is also a construct on the other side. We have Spirit, which is an Eldrazi Scion on the other side. We have the Manifest um, with Eldrazi Scion on the other side. And then a, another Manifest with a Phyrexian Germ. We have City's Blessing and the Construct. And then we have Phyrexian Golem, which is also an Ox. Um, so, I mean... Hold on. That's weird. Because... Where is he? Greatest 6 two. Oh, okay, so it's just a Construct. You just give it 6-2. That's weird. Because, like... Both of these constructs say get plus one plus one for each artifact. They don't get that ability on Ancient Stone Idol. It's just weird that they didn't include a token specifically for the Ancient Stone Idols thing. Because this doesn't have trample. It has trample. I don't know. That's weird. I find that weird. Um, I'm very happy that the color stack got printed and that we have it. Because it's the first time there's ever been a colorless precon. Um, I mean, it's expensive as hell, but it's a first. It's a first, and the reprints are great. The new prints are amazing. So I'm hoping that this is a stepping stone in the right direction on um, better precons in the future. Knowing Magic, they'll probably or Wizards of the Coast will just go back to the old stuff. We're gonna end up with forty dollar precons that are just not great. Um, that's best case scenario. Worst case is that they take this as, oh, people are willing to spend $80 on precons, and now all precons are $80. So, and the reprints are just going to get worse over time. But uh, that's me being a little pessimistic. I think that the Eldrazi deck is a 10 out of 10. I'm amazed that uh, they even did it. I'm happy, but also kind of sad about the favoritism toward one deck versus the other three. It feels like two of the decks got a big shaft, being the Planeswalker deck and the Sliver deck. Um, I don't think the the Enchantment deck really got a shaft. I think the Enchantment deck is fantastic. Uh, my buddy's picking it up, hopefully, while we're on vacation. But uh, that's if card stores have it in stock. Um, I'm checking out my local card store this weekend, see if I can pick up the Sliver deck. 
in person and then cancel my pre-order. Um, one, because I want to show support to my uh, local card store, but also because I kind of want to bring it with me on the vacation so we can play. And I would love to be able to play the Planeswalker deck um, while I'm on vacation instead of having to wait till I'm back from vacation. But uh, that's it for me. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification button down below to know my videos go live. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.